What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to explore the value of data and information in modern businesses and technology environments. Data is one of the most valuable assets a company can possess, influencing everything from decision making to strategic direction. In this video, we'll cover the concept of data as an asset, including the differences between critical and non-critical data. We'll talk about how data-driven business decisions are made by capturing, correlating, and reporting on data. We'll talk about the growing phenomena a data monetization. We'll talk about the role of data analytics, and we'll talk about the implications of big data. So let's dive right in. Let's start by talking about data and information as an asset. So in today's digital world, data is often considered more valuable than traditional physical assets like equipment or buildings. Companies collect vast amounts of data from customer preferences to internal operations and use it to improve processes, develop new products, and enhance the customer experience. But not all data is equally important. So let's talk about critical versus non-critical data. So critical data, this is data that's essential to the functioning and success of a business. Loss of critical data can lead to significant disruptions, financial loss, or reputational damage. And some examples include customer data, such as personal information like names names, emails, and addresses. We have financial data. These could be company financial records, transactions, and payroll details. And we have operational data. This is data necessary for running the core operations of a business, such as supply chain information or inventory levels. And then we also have what is called non-critical data. So while useful, non-critical data is not essential to daily operations or the company's survival. Loss or corruption of this data might cause inconvenience, but it won't necessarily halt business operations. So some examples include marketing preferences, and this could be historical data about promotional campaigns that might not affect current current operations, and then we have archive emails. This could be older communication that may no longer be relevant to current business activities. So it's important to classify data based on its criticality because this classification impacts how it's protected, stored, and managed. Businesses often use data classification systems to categorize data according to its level of importance. Next, let's explore data-driven business decisions. So in the modern business world, data plays a crucial role in shaping strategies and making informed decisions. But how does this happen? So let's break it down into three key stages. First stage is called data capture and collection. So companies collect data from a variety of sources, including customer interactions, social media, transaction records, and sensor data. This data is often stored in databases or data warehouses, ready for analysis. And the key challenge here is ensuring the accuracy and integrity of the data being captured. So garbage in and garbage out. If your data collection processes are flawed, your decisions will be flawed as well. Then we have what is called data correlation. So once collected, data must be correlated to find meaningful patterns or relationships. So for example, a business might correlate sales with customer demographics to understand which segments are purchasing certain products. And this is where business intelligence tools come into play, which help organizations identify trends and correlations between data sets. And then we have what is called meaningful reporting. So after correlating data, the next step is to present it in a way that decision makers can understand. This is often done through dashboards, charts, or reports. In reports, they should focus on key performance indicators relevant to the business's goals. So for example, a retail company might focus on sales trends, inventory levels, and customer satisfaction scores. Reporting is most effective when it enables actionable insights. The goal is not just just to understand what happened, but to inform decisions on how to improve outcomes. So data-driven decision-making, this reduces reliance on gut feeling and intuition, offering a more objective, evidence-based approach to business strategy. Now let's talk about data monetization, which is a growing trend in the business world. So data monetization, this is the process of turning data into revenue. Businesses collect and analyze data, not just to improve internal operations, but also to create new revenue streams. There are two primary ways companies monetize their data. The first is called direct data monetization. This involves selling raw data to third parties. So for example, social media platforms may sell user data to advertisers 
advisors looking to target specific demographics. Companies and industries like marketing, insurance, and healthcare often purchase data to gain insights into customer behavior, risk factors, or market trends. Then we have what is called indirect data monetization. In this approach, companies don't sell the data itself but instead use it to optimize internal processes or create new products and services. So for example, a ride sharing app like Uber uses real time data to improve driver routing and reduce wait times, which improves customer satisfaction and reduces operational costs. In e-commerce sites, they analyze customer purchase data to recommend products which drive additional sales. So by leveraging data effectively, businesses can open up new revenue opportunities and gain a competitive edge in their market. Let's move on to data analytics, which is the practice of examining data to draw meaningful insights from it. So data analytics comes in different forms. We have what is called descriptive analytics. And this type of analytics helps answer the question of what happened. It involves summarizing historical data to identify trends or patterns. So for example, a business might use descriptive analytics to understand past sales performance or customer behavior. Then we have what is called diagnostic analytics. So diagnostic Diagnostic analytics goes a step further by asking, why did it happen? This type of analysis explores the causes behind trends. So for example, a company might use diagnostic analytics to determine why sales drop during a specific period. And then we have what is called predictive analytics. So as the name suggests, predictive analytics focuses on forecasting future outcomes based on historical data. So for example, an online retailer might use predictive analytics to forecast future sales based on seasonal trends and past performance. And then we have what is called prescriptive analytics. And this is the most advanced form of analytics, which answers the question such as what should we do? It provides actionable recommendations based on data. So for example, if a business identifies a dip in sales, prescriptive analytics might suggest a specific marketing strategy to reverse the trend. So data analytics Analytics empowers businesses to make better decisions, increase efficiency, and uncover opportunities for growth. All right, and finally, we need to talk about big data. So big data, this refers to data sets that are so large or complex that traditional data processing tools cannot handle them. And big data is often described in terms of the three V's. And the first V stands for volume. And this is the sheer amount of data being generated, often measured in petabytes or exabytes. So for example, social media platforms like Facebook generate enormous volumes of data every second as users post, comment, and share content. The second V is called velocity. And this is the speed at which data is generated and processed. Big data is often generated in real time, such as the data produced by sensors on self-driving cars or financial market transactions. And the third V is called variety. So big data comes in many forms from structured data like databases to unstructured data like emails, videos, and social media posts. The challenge with big data isn't just its size, it's also how to store, process, and analyze it effectively. Traditional database management tools may struggle with big data, so companies often use specialized technologies like Hadoop or cloud-based solutions to handle it. And big data is valuable because it can offer insights that will be impossible to uncover with smaller data sets. So for example, healthcare organizations can use big data to analyze patient records and improve treatment plans, while marketers can use big data to understand consumer behavior on a massive scale. So in conclusion, Data and information are incredible, valuable assets in the modern business world. Understanding the differences between critical and non-critical data helps businesses protect what matters most, while data-driven decision-making allows companies to operate more effectively. Data monetization creates new revenue opportunities. Data analytics offers deeper insights into business performance. And big data opens up new frontiers for analysis at an unprecedented scale. So this knowledge is key for anyone preparing for the CompTIA TEP Plus exam, and it will help you understand the real world importance of data. 
So with all of that being said, let's do some of this check on learning. So the first question is, which of the following best describes critical data in the context of data as an asset? Is it data that is only used for internal reports and does not affect business operations? Is it data that if lost or compromised would cause minimal disruption to the organization? Is it data that is essential to the organization's operations and could cause severe impacts if lost or compromised? Or is it data that is no longer needed and can be archived? And the correct answer is, it is data that is essential to the organization's operations and could cause severe impacts if lost or compromised. So critical data is information that is essential to the organization's core functions. If such data is lost or compromised, it can lead to severe operational, financial, or reputational damage. Non-critical data, on the other hand, this may cause some inconvenience, but not a major disruption. Next question, which of the following is a key advantage of data-driven business decisions? Is it they eliminate the need for human decision makers? Is it they are based on intuition and experience rather than data? Is it they rely on data capture, analysis, and meaningful reporting to improve decision accuracy? Or is it they are quicker to make since they ignore data and focus on subjective opinions? And the correct answer is they rely on data capture, analysis, and meaningful reporting to improve decision accuracy. So data-driven business decisions leverage data capture, collection, and analysis to inform decision-making processes. This approach leads to more accurate, measurable, and objective decisions that can positively impact business outcomes as opposed to relying on subjective opinions or intuition. And the final question, how can data monetization benefit an organization? Is it by using data to directly generate revenue through sales or exchange? Is it by storing data indefinitely for future use, even if it has no current value? Is it by preventing competitors from accessing the data? Or is it by using non-critical data to make strategic decisions? And the answer is, it is by using data to directly generate revenue through sales or exchange. So data monetization, this refers to the process of using data to generate revenue, either by selling the data to third parties or using it internally to create new products, services, or improve efficiency. And data that is valuable can be leveraged to create financial gains for the organization.